All right, in this video, we're going to look at an introduction to these bell-shaped curves called normal distributions. And then we'll make this a, a quick intro, and then we'll do some calculations and z-scores and things in the next video. But just to get you acquainted with normal distributions, if, if you're not familiar with them, they're these bell-shaped curves that, you know, kind of come up to a peak and go down steeply and then flatten out on the ends, kind of like a bell, that describe a lot of different phenomena that we see in everyday life. Now, it doesn't mean, when we say normal, it doesn't mean that everything has a distribution like this, but it does, it is, it's something that occurs so commonly that we need to be, if we're studying data, we need to be very familiar with these kind of distributions and also how to do calculations with probabilities and use these normal distributions. So let's just get familiar with, with these things. Now, the first thing you need to know about a normal distribution is that theoretically, at least, now in practice, this isn't always going to be the case, but theoretically, these little tails that go down on the left and out to the right continue going forever, down to minus infinity here and up to positive infinity. So theoretically, these tails extend forever. Um, however, also, theoretically, and also in reality, we have to understand that the entire area under this curve, now this curve here is representing an idea of what would happen if we collected data on some kind of phenomenon. Let me tell you what this, this particular normal distribution we're looking at here describes. The number in the middle here, which is the mean, the population mean, is 100. And the measure of spread, the standard deviation, and usually you'll see me write the standard deviation up here on the right, is 15. And what this is describing is the distribution of IQ, or the intelligence quotient, of people in an average population. Some people above average, some people below average, of course. And the way that IQ tests are normally designed, there are a few different kinds, but the way they're normally designed is that the mean is equal to 100 and the standard deviation is equal to 15, the common distance or the common spread measure. So I think about the standard deviation as telling me a common distance that people you'll find people being away from average. Now when you look at a normal distribution, this standard deviation, you can find it visually. And visually, it's going to be at the place where, if you've, if you've ever been in a math class and you've heard of the term inflection point, an inflection point is where a curve stops getting steeper and starts getting flatter, right? So you can clearly see that the, the curve is getting flatter in this part and it's getting steeper and steeper in this part. There's some region right in here where that inflection point is going to be, and the inflection point for a normal distribution is always going to be right at that st one standard deviation away. So this is 100, 110, 120, and so one standard deviation away is going to be precisely right there. So uh, an IQ of 115 is one standard deviation above average, and a, an IQ of 85 is exactly one standard deviation below the average IQ. And if you know your empirical rule, the empirical rule is just a set of numbers that we ask people to memorize in statistics classes to familiarize themselves with these normal distributions. And what it tells you, the empirical rule is just memorizing three numbers. And we'll work with a table to show you where these three numbers come from in the next video. But the first number just says, if you go one standard deviation below average and one standard deviation above average, that between those two numbers, if we were to calculate what percentage of people are there, and 
through the same logic, what percentage of the total area of a histogram or a smooth curve, you know, approximating histogram, the percentage of the total area in this region is going to be 68.26%. So between um, minus one standard deviation and plus one standard deviation, there are going to be approximately 68, or mathematically, you know, exactly if you do the exact math, 68.26%. And that's actually rounding it, 68.26%. Um, so that means that 68.26% of people in, a po in an average population are going to have an IQ between 85 and 115. This is kind of this, you know, average common range that isn't really shocking if you have an IQ between 85 and 115. There's nothing really weird about that. That's where you expect most people to be in that range. Now, if we were to extend this idea down another standard deviation, so let me change color here, down minus another 15. 85 minus 15 will take us down to 70 right here. Add another 15, well, that would take us up to 130 right here. The second thing in the empirical rule we ask you to memorize to get a feel for these things is that between two standard deviations below and two standard deviations above the mean, you're just going to be 95.44%. So a little bit more than 95% will be there between those two numbers. So the further you go out on either side, of course, you're going to get a larger percentage of people there. Now, so if you, as you get out to 130 on the high side of IQ, you're starting to get into more rare territory, more uncommon territory. And similarly, on the left side, when you get an IQ down around 70, you're not in that common region where we expect to find most people. And so being two standard deviations away, while not shocking, it is unusual. So being two standard deviations away on either side, you're starting to get into that unusual area where we start to think something strange is going on here. Now the third number we ask you to memorize, normally in a statistics class, let me use red here, is if we go down 70, down another 15, that takes us down to about 55. We're getting way out there. And on this side, 130 plus 15 is going to take us up to 145. Three standard deviations above, three standard deviations below. That if we added up all the area and the percentage of people that should be in this region, then we are going to have 99.73%. And depending on which table or exactly how you calculate it, sometimes you get 99.72, sometimes 99.73%. But we'll call it 99.73%. 0.73% of all people, almost everybody, almost everything you study should be within three standard deviations. So if you are three standard deviations above average, 145 over here, oh, I'm sorry, here you can't quite see that on the video. Let me zoom that out a little bit. So if you are at 145, you are truly odd. You know, you're not normal. You have a very, very abnormally high IQ. And people above 145, we call a genius, right? Now, to keep this a positive video, I won't go into uh, what we call people down here. But, but really, in the early 1900s, they used to have some pretty bad names for people who are around 85. Well, I might as well go into it since I brought it up. Uh, people below 85 would be called things like dull, Psychologists weren't very nice back then. Um, 70 is off, below 70 is often used as a technical definition for mental retardation. And 55, I think I've seen some papers and some, some lists call this, you know, profoundly mentally retarded. Uh, people who, who really need constant care. Um, so, so this is to give you a feel for what we're talking about when we talk about standard deviations and, and one, two, and three standard deviations. The better you have a, a good gut understanding for normal distributions, the better off you're going to be in any statistics class. Now, this is just one example, the distribution of people's IQs. 
For any normal distribution you want to study, you need to know two numbers, and only two numbers. You have to know the mean, the number in the middle, which also, by the way, happens to be the median, because it also divides this distribution into 50% on the upper end and 50% on the lower end. So it's the median, the dividing line, the 50th percentile. And we also refer to this number in the middle as the mode because it's the most likely region to be in, okay? Now let's look at one more example just very quickly of a normal distribution. Well, let's look at two more since I, since I have them here. This one, it's not labeled and it's very small. I'm sorry, here let me zoom in just a little bit more here. Um, this one, the number that's in the middle is actually 266. Let me use a darker color so you can see it. 266, 266 days is what we're talking about. And this is the average length of a pregnancy, is 266 days. Now you'll see some other numbers mentioned for the average length of a pregnancy. And the differences you'll see depend on whether you're talking about measuring from the uh, first day of the first missed menstruation or uh, the probable date of conception. And there are some other ways people try to get at measuring that. But 266 days uh, and the standard deviation is 16 days. So the standard deviation and mean can be any number. The standard deviation has to be a positive number. The mean could be negative. Could be a negative number for some things that you would study. And so anyway, with the length of a pregnancy, now you know that on average, pregnancies are 266, and it's pretty common for pregnancies to last a little more than two weeks, or a little less than two weeks, you know, a little more than two weeks, longer or shorter than 266 days. And if you saw somebody's pregnancy who was 16 days long or 16 days short, you would know that's nothing really weird. But if it was 32 days or 40 days, you know, you're talking about much more than one standard deviation. You're getting into these rare territories where you might start to be worried about that pregnancy. And last quick one, just to give you a feel for normal distributions that we'll look at, is this one. It, in the United States, this shows the normal bell-shaped distribution for the heights of adult men in the United States. The average height of an adult man in the United States is 69 inches, which is 5 feet 9 inches. Uh, for you people who speak metric, this would be something, oh, maybe one point seven or 1.8 meters or so, I would be guessing, something along those lines. The standard deviation of adult men height in the United States is around three inches. And so knowing the mean and knowing the standard deviation, we can say, well, uh, the empirical rule says that about 68 point 26% of adult men in the United States will be within three inches of that mean here. So go up one, two, three. That's one standard deviation. Down one, two, three inches. And 68.26% of men will be between 72 inches on the high side and 66 inches, five and a half feet on the low side. Um, and we could do the same thing with two standard deviations and three standard deviations. Uh, let's just do three standard deviations. Almost everybody you meet, almost everybody is going to be within three standard deviations. Three standard deviations is three times three inches. That's nine inches. So if we go from 69 inches up another nine, we're up to 78 inches. And you can see that there's almost no area left out here above 78 inches. Almost all of it's going to be in this range. So, and we go down 69 minus 9, we're talking about, and there's almost no area down there, but we're talking about 60 inches down here. So, almost all adult men you meet in the United States are going to be between 5 feet tall. Uh, sorry, that's, that's 5 inches. Five feet is one little slash there. So five feet and six feet, eight inches. 
Now that doesn't mean that there aren't some people who are taller than six foot eight, but it is so rare that you meet them that you're shocked. These are going to be, you know, professional basketball players. A lot of them are taller than six foot eight. Uh, and every once in a while you see someone shorter than five feet. But it's such a rare event that about 99.73% of people are going to be between, and this is adult men in the United States, between those two heights. So now that we have a feel for what normal distributions are all about, in the next video, we're going to work on using a normal distribution table to do some calculations other than these uh, kind of restricted things we've been talking about, exactly one and exactly two and exactly three standard deviations. What if I wanted to know, for example, how many people are between 72 and 73 inches tall? How would we do that? That's coming up in the next video.